If God specially created creatures, <laughs> what would be a good word to use? Because they were separately and specially created, right? So what better word than species? Species, yeah. So therefore, the whole concept of species is actually related to special creation. creation. And they never told you that, and they never told me that, no. because the minute they do it gives away the whole kit and caboodle. Yeah. Darwin is not telling us the truth. No. In fact, if you read Charles Darwin's book on the origin of the species, guess one thing it's not about? It's not about the origin of any species at all. <laughs> it's about what happens to the species when they're here. Mm. How they can be selected or killed off. Oh. That's what it's actually about. Mm. It's not about the origin of anything. anything. Okay, so therefore the whole book is a deceit. Mm -hmm. But it was popular because, well, particularly in England, they didn't like the strict rules of Queen Victoria. Mm. And those strict rules were based on the church's teaching that God had absolute right to make mm -hmm. rules. Yes. You want to get rid of Queen Victoria's rules, you have to get rid of the God who gave a basis those. for those yes. rules. He was the creator, so what better way? Throw out creation, introduce evolution, and you can go wherever you like mm. as chance dictates. You mentioned something very interesting. That, uh, like, uh, now it, it turns out that uh, uh, scientists were clergymen, religious people, mm -hmm. So those who are at the very basis of science turn out to be Christians, okay. creation believers. Creation believers, okay. Christian influence in okay. some cases, but you know, definitely they knew their Bible, yeah. they knew it spoke about creation, and that was their starting point. Yeah. Um, could you please help us out a little bit on Charles Darwin's background? Because, I mean, I, I would guess that... Uh, He's called the father of all biological sciences today, it's kind mm -hmm. of that. Well, what is his background then? Okay, perhaps this fossil will help you. Where is it? There it is. Do you know what that Very is? Very nice. Well, it, it's either a claw or a tooth. Okay, it's a carnosaur tooth, right? Cool. I lead field trips all around the world and we lead dinosaur digs on the Isle of Wight and we've got one coming up in Montana. This is beautiful. In July, it is beautiful, isn't mm -hmm. it, right? And the interesting thing is Charles Darwin lived at the same time as the man who invented the word dinosaur. Was the word dinosaur invented? Yeah, like, yeah. It didn't come into existence until 1841. And you see, the one reason why Charles Darwin's book has got a chapter in it on fossils, mm -hmm. in which he says, the fossils are basically the worst part of my theory, is because of the man who invented the word dinosaur. You see, his name was Sir Richard Owen, and Sir Richard Owen was the founding director of the Natural History Museum in London, and it was set up to be a showplace of all of God's creatures. Okay, hold on a minute. It was the British Natural History Museum? Yes, yes, that's how it started out. Isn't it the place today where all Darwinism is on show? Basically it is, and it's, it's a sad betrayal of why it was set up. Because the man who invented the word dinosaur quote unquote, was sure that God made them. These were the monsters that God made. Now, Charles Darwin was there at the same time, mm -hmm. and Charles Darwin's father wanted him to become an Anglican priest, a clergyman, because there was good money in it, right? It was an occupation. Not that Charles Darwin's father was a churchman or a Christian, he was an atheist by all records. Mm. But it was a good occupation. Darwin t tried a little bit of medicine at uh, Edinburgh University. Didn't like it, it was too messy. Um, so he didn't have much of a biological background. Mm -hmm. So he did train as a theologian. Now the interesting thing is, he graduated in theology and a little bit of maths and that thrown in the side and invented the theory of evolution while the scientists like Sir Richard Owen who were graduates in science and, you know, the founding director of the yes, British Museum yes. and the world's best geologist in the day, said, Mr. Darwin, there isn't a fossil to back up anything you say. Something's wrong. Yes, doesn't, doesn't it sound wrong? <laughs> and it's to do with the relationship of fact and faith. Darwin actually changed faith. Mm. So he needed a new explanation of the facts. Mm. You see, when his daughter Annie died, he turned his back on Christianity. And as his great-great-grandson said, from then on he was free to go in his evolutionary path unhindered by any Christian convictions. 
Well, we're talking about evolution being kind of religion? Yes, because you see, if you think it through carefully, Darwin was the first to admit because Professor Richard Owen said, you've got to say this, Charles, there's no fossils to back up anything, so therefore Darwin never based his theory on the fossil evidence. Secondly, he lived before the work of Gregor Mendel, the priest who yes, was a yes, geneticist. He lived before his work had ever been published, mm. so Darwin knew nothing about genetics. genetics. And he never lived long enough to see anything evolve into something else at all. Was that going to so, remember? Yeah. Therefore, the, the three things that you need for a scientific theory, evidence that has happened, yes. evidence that is happening, and a way by which it can happen, those three things are totally lacking from Charles Darwin's work on the origin of the species. As I'm informed, he actually admitted that there is really something that it's not helping his work at all. Oh yes, yeah, the fossils were the, the worst fossils. part of his theory. He knew that. The, well, he, he didn't have any choice. Professor Richard Owen was telling everybody who yes. would listen mm. that this is a terrible theory. Mm -hmm. So the scientists were his biggest opponents in the beginning. So therefore, yes, you're quite right in saying it. If, if you're talking about faiths, Christianity is a fact-based faith, okay. whereas evolution is an absolutely fact-less based faith. There is the difference. They're two religions, mm -hmm. but one is based on facts. That's why when you read your New Testament, the, say the, 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 the Apostle Luke mm -hmm. says, you know, I've written to you Theophilus, yes. I've collected all the evidence, and here it is, go and check it out, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's a fact-based faith. Mm -hmm. Whereas the uh, theory of evolution, nobody was there to watch it happen. Darwin didn't have any evidence. He didn't know how it could. And I'll be honest, my professor at university, I went back and took genetics. And uh, the interesting thing is somebody said, but if evolution is so true, professor, how come we can't see it happening? And the professor said, well, very profoundly, of course, evolution takes such a long time to happen you wouldn't expect to see anything happening. Now, if you think about that, that's a nonsense. Yeah. Because what's the difference between something that's taking so long to happen that you don't see anything happen and something that you can't see happening because nothing's happening? Yeah. The answer is, it's crazy. So therefore, it's always been a blind faith, faith-based religion. And that's the real conflict. Mm -hmm. It's not fact versus faith. It's not Christianity versus science. It's the faith of evolutionism versus the faith of Jesus Christ, the Creator. That's where the real conflict is, and people always... It works best if you can finally get it back to the real argument. Mr. Mackay, with the fall of communism, millions of people were giving back their choices. Would you give a little bit of something to boost the courage of having, again, choices in our schools, in our high schools, in our universities? Well, as you probably remember, I met with uh, Professor Maria Popper and we tried yes. to help her put together a book and I was very pleased mm. just the other day to yes. be in a school We've that was using yes. the textbook, yes. which was an attempt to get the students to rethink mm -hmm. all the evidence that's presented to them and say, look, evolution is not the only, yeah. nor even the logical mm -hmm. conclusion. Mm -hmm. So there is a textbook available here that mm -hmm. deals with creation. Excellent. So the choice is there. Yes. But of course, the ultimate choice won't simply be about the facts you see in front of you. Mm -hmm. The ultimate choice will be about your relationship to the creator. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, let's be honest, to most people, mm -hmm. So what? A fossil shark's tooth yeah. out of a hole. To me, it's exciting. Yeah. To you, it's a thrill. Yeah. But to some people, it's just a dirty black thing. Yes. You see, the ultimate result is the God who created has enough authority to hold you and I accountable for the choices that we make. Yes. So students, you do have the power to make the choice. Yes. You have the evidence to base your choice upon, mm. and the faith is available from the Creator mm. to make the right choice. Thank you so much, Mr. McKay. Thank you so much. So, you've heard... Please, there's a coin with two faces. You may choose one and leave the other outside, but be, please be careful. Choosing one is going to lead you to the Creator. Thank you so much for uh, being with us today. Uh, please join us for the next program. <laughs>